you know who I am? Who? Shifting metal. Who? Shifting metal. Who? Shifting metal! <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're doing well. Hopefully most of you got the Ronnie Pickering reference at the beginning there, because I'm driving this 2007 Citroen Zaro Picasso, which is what the infamous Ronnie Pickering was driving when he did that kind of road rage video. Come on, who are you then? Ronnie Pickering! Who? Ronnie Pickering! Who? Ronnie Pickering! Who the f is that? Yeah, me! This grubby little car is something that was offered to us, uh, I would say through carsboughtformore.com, but it was a bit more analogue than that, actually. I recently have taken out an advert in our local kind of parish gazette that goes out 12 times a year, I think. Uh, it's called Coastline. Anyway, I had a thing in there for Barrow Motor saying we do transport and we buy cars. He came in and said, I saw your advert in the magazine saying you buy cars with MOTs. That's not specifically what it said, but either way, I said, yeah, that's fine. Uh, looked at this thing, he said it's got a battery drain on it. Obviously, it's a bit grubby and... He told me it was on about 180,000 miles or something. So I said, all right, well, I'll come out and have a look. I don't know how much you're going to like the price we give you, but we can certainly give you something. Um, turns out it was only on 124,000 miles and it has a different colored bumper, it had a tow bar on it, it, had a trailer on it at the time full of like tree cuttings. And the guy just said he was, he bought a new car already and he basically just wanted a shot of this. And I said, I put it in the cap average price for this car was 115 pounds. That's in an average condition. This is probably in poor condition because the bumper is not even the correct color. And it's so grubby on the outside, it's practically a living organism. And to be honest, on the inside, it's not much better. There are at least several dozen families of spiders living in here. There's more cobwebs in this car than there are under Spider-Man's mattress. So yeah, I, I said, I'll give you 200 quid because I thought that's probably what scrap will be. He said it had a battery drain. So that I think he said by the morning it'll have gone flat. I said, ah, oh, okay, all right, well, it doesn't matter if we scrap it anyway, but uh, I didn't expect him to accept it, but he said, yeah, great, when, when can we do it? I told him to come back in the next afternoon, which he did, and yeah, we gave him a bank transfer, got it done, and it was parked outside till I decided I really need to do something with this, and I guess I'm going to need to jumpstart it. Good news for us is that actually it didn't need to jumpstart at all, and it has done for a couple of days after that, with just starting up to see if it had gone flat, and it hasn't, so we thought we'd test the battery, that says the battery is okay. All right, it gave us a reading of 50%, which you would have thought has got to be borderline, but it does say that it is okay as far as Steph's uh, snap-on diagnostics tool goes. And this thing's actually got a half-decent MOT on it, I think. So we might have got a little bit of a diamond in the rough here. All right, it's never going to go for crazy money, but I think you could probably get a £1,000 for this, assuming that it's not rusting on the seals, which these really commonly are. If you are going to look at buying one of these, then that's the first thing you need to look out for. Because if they haven't rusted through, a lot of them are going to be just about ready to rust through, or they will have had a patch put in in the past, which is probably rusting through as well. So I can't stress enough how much these rust. You really need to look out for that. But actually, I think this looks all right. I've been looking around in this car, and among the kind of leaves, mud, spiders' webs, and rubbers, for the pedals, which should be on the pedals, but obviously they aren't. There's a few interesting features in here. We've got power electric mirrors, which are heated. We've got front and rear electric windows. They've got these weird little switches on the dashboard here, and they work. No panoramic roof, which is a big letdown. Very grubby. I mean, these, I don't even want to touch the sun visors. They are very grubby. We've got armrests on each of the seats. I guess these are probably fairly common things on these aren't they i know a lot of the ones i've had are but i've got to say these things they do drive very nicely i mean it's a very dull kind of visually aesthetically quite an offensive car it's certainly not the type of car that someone who likes car design is going to buy but i've got to give it to them they are comfortable and easy to drive being french they do kind of soak up the bumps and it does make this a very easy thing to drive even the five-speed manual gearbox it's all right i mean it's a bit like stirring a soup but it's not too bad once you've figured out exactly where first is and this one's actually got cruise control let's see if we can get that doing its thing we're doing 40 miles an hour and it's dropping how do i set it well I turn that to turn it 
on or off? That's on. Let's get ourselves up to 40 and then... Mm, there's a very high chance I'm using this incorrectly. But... It doesn't seem to be working. The display is flashing, which would kind of back up his statement that it keeps going flat. It's certainly gone flat at some point. Maybe that's got something to do with the cruise control not working, but on the whole, I don't think it's going to affect this car too much. We have actually got some history with this car and another spare key. And interestingly, there's a sticker on the back that says Triangle Garage, which is the name two prior to when I took over at Barrow Motors. It was Triangle Garage, then it was Barrow Garage, and now it's Barrow Motors, now that I've taken over. Uh, so this was originally sold from this garage, God knows how many years ago, and in fact, there is an original Triangle Garage key tag uh, in there as well, still written up, which I'll show you in a minute. And it's, that's really interesting, because when we moved into Barrow Motors, there was actually still this massive steel roller machine for making these key tags. It seemed to be a completely outdated system. We couldn't get anything to, to make it work, and even if we did, the die said Triangle Garage. So that ended up on the scrap pile, unfortunately. But it's still interesting to see that, you know, these cars are still out there, and I'm hoping there'll be some Triangle Garage service history. There might be some Barrow Garage service history in there as well. So we'll find somewhere in a minute. We'll pull up, and we'll have a look through what we've actually got. What's funny about these Zara Picassos is I actually used to buy quite a lot of them. When I first started out five years or so ago, and these would be going through the auctions, quite a lot of them. You could get your hands on them fairly regularly, and they were cheap, but they were still desirable to the public, to the trade. They probably, most people knew about the fact that they would rust out and they'd probably try and avoid them. So if you were ballsy, like I had to be back then, you could make at least quick money, maybe not massive money out of them, but if you knew that you needed to make sure that you had one that had a long enough MOT that didn't mention rust, then I remember having bought one of these before, and I think I bought it before I knew to check for the rust, and I paid £100 for it, plus the fees, which made it £180, £185. I used to buy a lot of cars for £100 at the auction and get it back for all under for two, less than 200 quid. I remember getting that one back in particular and finding out that the seals were completely crusty and clearly it needed work. I don't think I had a workshop at the time, or if I did, I didn't want to be doing welding or whatever. So I just put it up as like, you know, knees welding or whatever, 600 quid and it was gone. That was 400 quid made like that in one day, being completely honest with people, saying, just got this car, needs um, welding, but it's got an MOT, etc. And people were willing to spend 600 quid just to drive a car for eight months, even if it did need welding. Don't get me wrong, it's not the sort of car or deal I'd want to be going out of my way to buy and do these days at all. But I guess those are the sorts of deals that you have to do when you're starting out. If you don't have a big budget, you've got to make a profit however you can. Obviously, not ripping people off, but I quite quickly realised you can make money even being honest and selling it on to someone else who wanted to trade it. In fact, that's always been my best selling tactic. It's just being completely honest and not pushy with people, saying, there's the car, if you want it, great. If you don't, then the last thing I want to do is, you know, convince you to buy it, so it's entirely up to you. Here's all the facts, make up your own mind, and be as laid back as you possibly can, and it always seemed to work well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely needs some windscreen wipers as well. Don't think they ever use them, because it, just like moss across the windscreen but yeah that is I've got less visibility now than before I put the washers on which is not ideal right so let's have a look at this service history first off here's our key tag I wonder if it says any dates on it it doesn't there is triangle garage run by Paul Mellows we got our v5 one former keeper so two keepers in total We've got a Formula First of Western Supermare folder for the MOTs. So it's MOT runs out 0308 2024. Has got a few advisories. So play in steering rack, inner joints, near side front, outer seal corrosion. So it has got some. Uh, near side rear, tire tread low. Don't know if that's been changed or not. We'll have a look out. 
uh, offside rear tyre perishing, and near side front. So probably do with a set of four tyres, couldn't it? But they'd be quite cheap on this. You can probably get a set of tyres for 100 quid, plus that probably. That's for an MOT. That's for an anti-roll bar, drop link, reverse light switch. This was a service. Uh, 122,000 miles. When was that? That was in 2022. So they haven't been doing much mileage in it. Maybe they're just using it as a tip run car because it's only on 124, 415 now. Uh, steering rack gator. Another service. It was in 2020 on 118. So they haven't been putting a lot of mileage on this. 2019, they had the battery which is in there. I know it is a Varta because that's what I looked at. So actually, that was March, which we're basically coming up to now of 2019. We're coming into 24. Five years old with a three-year guarantee, so it's outlasted that by two years. So if, you know, what he was saying about having a, a battery or a power drain, it just probably just wants a new battery, really. Here is, yeah, Paul Mellows. Oh, but that was, this was when he was somewhere else on Love Lane. So that was 2019. Uh, Carry-out service, MOT on 113,000. Looks like there's a couple more there which is interesting to see. I'll tell you what I didn't do actually, was do a history check on this car because I thought it was gonna be a dud really and we'd send it straight off to scrap, maybe making 50 quid. I couldn't lose out. And the scrapyard doesn't turn their nose up at a car that's been categorized, but if we're gonna sell it now, I probably ought to. So, you know where we're going. Our number one favorite site, which I have saved on my phone is vehiclescore.co.uk. This is the website that gives you a free score on your car from 1 to 999, basing it off of its MOT history, age, mileage, and many other factors, give you an idea of whether that car is good or not. And then before you hand over your cash, you need to be doing a history check. They offer three different types, and the one we're going to do is the Insured Ultimate Report. That's only £9.97, which is already a lot cheaper than alternatives out there. But you can use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20, and you get 20% off, making it just £7.98 which was what we're about to do. So the reg is Whiskey Juliet 07, Delta Fox Ray, Fox Ray? Foxtrot Echo. 539 out of 999, that's pretty average. Not surprising considering the mileage and age, because it tends to knock that against it. Uh, good bits, uh, long-term owner, recent MRT pass rate's high. Average yearly mileage is perfect. Uh, bad bits, yeah, over 10 comments on recent MOTs. Vehicles over 10 years old, mileage is above 100,000. So some of the most useful things on here is the fact that we can look at our MOT history and we can also look at vehicle details. So yeah, it says we've got 185 days of MOT left. It's a 1.6 diesel. Uh, we've got a mileage tracker, so you can check that's always consistently going up, not dipping down, because that might give you the heads up that it's been clocked. They've even got an AI mechanic on here now, so you can ask it a question, say, my car, a Citroen Zara 1.6, has got a misfire, and it will give you loads of things that you can check. It's not going to give you the exact answer, but it gives you loads of useful information. I absolutely love that. I've been playing around with that, and it's pretty good, actually. But what we really need to do is do this Ultimate Report Plus. I'm going to do this by Apple Pay because it's so easy to do, but before we do that, we're going to chuck in our promo code, which is shifting metal. 20 add see it's just seven pounds 98 now let's put that through and find out whether there's actually a hidden history with this car or not oh it has got a category against it this honestly isn't planned so let's find out what's happened with it right so in 2021 so only a couple of years ago this owner would have definitely known about that because it happened with them category n non-structural damage well, it says the lost date was in 2019, but it wasn't entered until 2021. That's interesting, isn't it? So I'm going to have to let any potential buyers of that know this now. So it's, I'm not going to be getting a thousand pounds. I mean, if you said you knocked 20 percent of the value off on something like this. Normally, you say a car that's got a category against it, you can sell it for about two thirds of its normal value. So this would that would make this about 700 pounds. But I think we can get a bit more. I'm going to try for 800 pounds. We need to give it a clean up, and maybe put some tires on it, which we'll do in this video. And then maybe on Instagram, I'll let you know how much you sell it for. Right, well, 
let's head back. It's getting towards the end of the day, so we're not going to get this clean today. I'll try and get it clean tomorrow, because actually, although it is really grubby, there's like grime and moss everywhere, and there's cobwebs and all kinds of stuff in here. I really don't think this is going to be a hard one to clean. There is some mould on some of the seats and fabrics, but it's not a wet mould really. There's not a ton of stains in here. I don't think it's really going to need a massive wet vac. Good hoover out, a wipe down, put some TFR or citrus or something on the outside, let it soak in to get all that moss and everything off. And it's amazing what a difference that will make. So I'll catch up with you tomorrow once we've cleaned this and I've done a bit of research and decided exactly how much we're going to sell this for. Right, so just picked up the Picasso from our local hand car wash. Spent 30 of our finish English pounds on having it cleaned. It's not the finest of valets, but that's what you'd expect for 30 quid really, isn't it? At the moment, we couldn't actually get it in the wash bay because the guys are in there. They've reversed one of the recovery trucks in there to work on it, so we couldn't clean it. We want to get this video out tonight. I want to get this car kind of photographed and sold off ASAP as well. So a little 30 pound investment there. Other than that, we need to get back and check on the tires, see whether they need changing. If not, this thing's pretty much good to go. I'm gonna get some pictures of it. And I think I've got some good news on the price as well. So things I'm noticing, nothing much has been done with the dash, but I don't think much can be done with it because it just looks like the paint has kind of flaked off of the surface of the texture of the... I just think the colors come off of whatever product plastic it is they've used for the dashboard probably just worn out through UV. These sun visor things are still really grubby. Even just like an antibacterial wipe would clean those up massively. There's long blonde hairs on the passenger seat and there's still some in the back, but they have made an effort to hoover up all the bits of like damp and whatever. All the cobwebs are gone. From the quick look that I had on the outside, it did look an awful lot better out there. They've got all of the kind of long standing dirt and everything off. And because this is going to be like a little trade car, like a Facebook marketplace, even though we're not selling it as a trade car, I mean, it will be for sale as the business, but, you know, we're not putting our fair amount of stamp on this and saying this is our finest and brightest cars that we have for sale. This is just something, an opportunity to get yourself something cheap. I don't think it matters too much about it being immaculately clean. People go and buy cars privately and they're filthy and they've got people's rubbish inside, so don't get too hung up on uh, getting them perfectly clean that's a top tip for uh, if you're a car trader especially if you're starting out cheap you can waste your profit through your time efforts and products getting a car perfect when it doesn't need to be so let's get back to the garage figure out if we need some tires i can tally up everything this has cost me so far how much i think we're going to put it up for and how much profit that can potentially give us Right, so we got it back. I've given the sun visors a wipe down, didn't take a lot of effort to be honest. I've stuck a air freshener that we got free with some cleaning products in there as well. I've checked the tires, they're all perfectly legal, no issues there. And in fact, we looked at the near side sill as well where it said it had excess corrosion. Can't see anything whatsoever. So I think our MOT tester was particularly overzealous. Good news is we don't need to spend any more money. We spent 30 pounds on a valet, which to be fair, makes it look a lot better, but it has exposed a couple of issues. Now they've got all the dirt and grime off, you can see the damage on the near side a lot more. And someone's actually scratched a star into the driver's window, which is a bit weird, but it's very small. It doesn't really affect it too much. Good news is I had a quick look on Auto Trader to see how much these are selling for. I can only actually find two that were in this sort of mileage and age. The cheapest one I could find was 1,500 pounds. And the second one was 2,200 pounds. So, all right, ours is a category N, but I still think actually we probably can get that 1,000 pounds, 995 quid. So we're looking at about 770 quid profit, which is, an absolute bargain. So all in all, pretty decent result. It goes to show that the old school marketing still works. So um, yeah, we'll definitely make our money back on that advert already. So we're very happy with that. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you want to sell me your car, you can head to my website, carsboughtformore.com. 
If you need a car transported, head to boroughmotors.co.uk forward slash transport. And if you're looking for any of my merchandise or any of my discount codes, including vehicle score, head to shiftingmetal.co.uk. They're all on there as well as the podcast. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.